What is going on everybody? Thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Recently I made a video short, just a one minute video showing how I use a telescoping pole from Amazon.com and basically I'm able to rapidly deploy it. Today I wanted to go into a little bit more detail on the build to maybe help you at home and give you a couple ideas. Now it might be your first time building something and this is a really easy project if it is your first time. But we're gonna go ahead and discuss kind of why I made this build, why I like using this pole right here, and why I think it has advantages over something like an MFJ 1910 or uh, even a spider beam pole, which I, I really do like. But this one has some advantages. So let's go ahead and just discuss a few things here. Now, first of all, this pole was off of Amazon.com and I think it was somewhere around $49 or $45. It is a uh, super hard gold light 7.2 meter pole. You could find it on Wish.com or LA Express for a little bit cheaper and with shipping, you're gonna save about $10. I'll go ahead and I'll leave a link below in case you're interested in It's an affiliate link, so I might get a little bit of kickback from it. Briefly, I wanna discuss the pole itself and some questions came up about boy those are some very thin top pieces uh, to the telescoping pole and I would agree look at that right there very thin uh, I will say that they're pretty flexible here I don't know if you can see that it's not really focusing they are pretty flexible but because they are so thin the top two sections there's two extra pieces that are included with this pole additionally we're not even going to use these top two sections the way I do things uh, in the way that I was taught to do things. So you could just take them out and place them to the side, um, or you could leave them in there for good measure. But once you don't use these two, these two rods right here, your pole isn't 7.2 meters anymore. Your pole becomes 17 feet, eight inches or so. Uh, so keep that in mind in case you need exactly 21 feet or exactly 22 feet. Uh, you're going to shorten it a little bit if you do take these elements out. But as I mentioned here, you know, when you add that second element in, you, you can't have as much bend. But it still bends and it seems like it's fine. So you let me know what you think if you've had any experience with this. And I'd be kind of curious to hear. So anyway, once you end up getting the pole, you're going to, you're going to need to have the pole be able to fit into something. Right, and so for example, you wanna put it into the ground or spike it in the ground, so you're gonna need guy rods, or you could use a spike, and this is one that Chuck KK6USY showed me how to build. Basically, it's a spike here. I got this 10 spike, uh, six of them for $7.99 at Harbor Freight, which goes into a piece of three eighths inch PVC tubing. Now, one problem I ran into today while trying to build one is I couldn't find three eighths inch PVC. Uh, I did find one half of an inch, what I think is called PMG 2550 rated. It's an off color white, like a cream white. And anyway, it works the same way. The only difference is, is it seems like you might have to put a little more tape around the edges. I'll show you right now. But basically what happens now is you're gonna take that tent spike that you got from Harbor Freight and it works a lot better with the Harbor Freight 10 spike because these are plastic right here. In my original short video, it was metal and I actually had to grind it down. It's unnecessary and could be unsafe, especially if you're not good with power tools like myself. Anyway, go ahead and take this off here. And once you have it off, all you have is your 10 spike. You're just gonna place your 10 spike through here. And in my original directions, I said, hey, you could use epoxy and glue it in. You could still do that. But again, to kind of make things easy, we're gonna use electrical tape on this real quick. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and unscrew that bottom cap. Now be mindful that there are tubes in here. So if you do this, they're gonna turn. You could just take them out for right now if you want to. But basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to see how much play is in there. As you can see, there's quite a bit of play. And you're gonna to wanna to start putting electrical tape here and here to kind of make it so it fits in this tube a little snugger. On the 3 8 inch tube, somewhere between six to eight wraps seems to be the magic number if you're using electrical tape. And then what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm actually gonna tape down onto the rod. And it's not gonna be the most durable thing in the world, but if you don't wanna use the, the glue, this would work in a pinch, as you can see here. So basically, once you do that here, you're gonna go ahead and place the PVC pipe and stake into the pole. And now I still have a little play, so I'll add just a little bit more. And then I probably added just a little too much. As you can see now, it doesn't fit in. So I was, at, uh, I was at 12 turns, and I think now if I take off two turns, we'll be at 10 turns, and that should be good. 
There you go. That fits nice and snug in there now. It does look loose, but it is snug. And once it hits that bottom piece as well, it'll kind of grab a little bit more. So that piece is done. Just be mindful when you spike it into the ground, hold this down, otherwise it might pop up. And if you really want it to be secure, you should probably use the glue. So that's actually just about everything we need. Let's talk a little bit about why, and then we'll test everything out. Why the stake rod? Well, if you haven't picked up on it already, if you're doing parks on the air or summits on the air, you could spike this into the ground and it's basically gonna, when you put the pole over it, it's gonna hold the pole up. It's self-sustaining the pole, so it's kind of nice. Uh, but it's not necessary always. And let me tell you why it's not necessary, which also leads to the point of some of the things that this pole might be useful for. See, I originally wanted a Soda Beam 6 carbon fiber pole, but unfortunately they just keep pushing the date back when they're actually gonna be available. And because of that, I had to find a solution. It is very small and lightweight, which is good for my back. But also, if I didn't want to spike it into the ground, this bottom portion fits really nice in the back of my truck. There's a spot on the side of my truck, I'll see if I can get a video, where you could actually put a pole in and it'll kind of just hold itself up right there. So that's nice. And people are going to ask, and I have seen the question already, is there a problem with carbon fiber interfering with your antenna in the, in the actual signal that's being put out. I reached out to Chuck KK6USY and he said he did see some issues on vertical. So if you had a vertical antenna, there might be an issues. But in this situation, I'm gonna be using a sloper and there hasn't been any issues in the sloper configuration that I could tell. In fact, I've made quite a few cool contacts. With all that, I think I'm in the project, less than $50, so just about the price of a Soda Beam 6. And hey, if you could wait until December or who knows, then do it. But if you need something right now, uh, check it out. Maybe, maybe build this and it might be a fun little build, even though it's really quick. So with all that, let's go ahead and see how this actually works. And so the nice thing about the pole also is it is lightweight, so if you need to put it up or take it down and make all these adjustments, you're not having to deal with a thick pole that's a little bit heavier and worrying about balancing it. And in fact, it even whips out kind of with no problem there. So once you whip it all out there, you're just gonna go ahead and just like any other pole, you're gonna, what I would say, lock your ends in place by just kind of pulling them up slightly while you're twisting. And because it is so lightweight, I could actually just kind of start to put my antenna up right here let me go grab it. So the antenna that I'm gonna to use today is gonna to be the KK6 USY end fed. It's for 40 meters, so it's rather long, uh, but I'm gonna just still demonstrate everything. Now people might wonder, well, how are you gonna get the end on here to stay? You could either use electrical tape or there's some other, you have 3D print apart. There's plenty of ways to get it to stick on there, but for today I am gonna use electrical tape as a quick uh, temporary solution. And now with this in place, I'm gonna walk back to wherever I, I'm gonna put my radio. Though I imagine it's gonna be rough to see, I got a wire that's right here, and it goes up to that pole. And as you could tell here, I'm gonna pull. And that pole is pretty durable. I hope you could see that okay. I mean, it's got a pretty good bend to it right now, and there's no sign there that anything's gonna break or snap. So that is just the example, and let's go ahead and show you what it's gonna look like in the dirt. So for this, it's the same concept. I just dug it in the hole. It's nice in there. Now I'm gonna unscrew the bottom portion because the rest of it is extended. It's a lot easier to do it when it's extended if you have two people, but if you don't have two people, you could actually do it while it's not extended. But regardless, then it just slides on there. And let's take a look at how much actual play it's gonna have while it's in the ground. Okay, admittedly, we had a storm and the ground is really saturated. But same thing here, the cable can get nice and tight. And if you can see that, it has some play to it. So that's kind of nice. And then it'll go right back to its normal position if you let go. You know, while I'm out here, I wanted to show you my camera bag because it's integral to why I like this pole as well. Now, ideally I want the Soda Beam 6. It's a lot shorter. The Soda Beam 6 is probably this tall, you know, when it's not you know, when it's collapsed rather. And obviously this one has a little bit more height to it. Uh, however, it still fits really nice on the side of my camera bag. And as you can see here, uh, there's not much more room for anything else. So an MFJ 1910 pole wouldn't fit in here. Uh, a Soda Beam, or excuse me, the uh, Spider Beam 10 wouldn't fit in here, but this does. So it's nice and it's compact. 
And since I'm on the topic of bags, I got this camera bag for about three bucks at Goodwill. And it fits my IC705 with the POV mount. And it fits, you know, my stake goes in here. So everything's nice and compact and ready to go. I could throw this in my truck and be ready to do radio whenever I need to. So this will be a, a lot lighter of a situation or a scenario than other bags like the one that Chuck KK6 USY recently showed. And uh, that's another reason I went with this pole is because it fit nice on the bag. So just some final thoughts on this pole, this project and this build. It's a fun little project and build just to get something going. And you know, so I, I needed a pole for rapid deployment and I think I found a solution for now. Again, I'd probably want the Soda Beam 6 in the future to compare them, but I hope this was a little more detailed for you and kind of gave you a reasoning why you might want to build your own, uh, especially because a lot of these poles are actually back ordered now for months and months. And I hope you enjoyed this content. Now I make this content so other people could see something and learn, but I try to make it easy so everybody could understand it. If there was something I could clarify for you, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll probably be using this poll when I do 24 hours parks on the air here coming up in the near future. With that, I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thank you very much for watching the channel, 73.